how to ride the train, subway, and Shinkansen in Tokyo. Many people, when they're planning a trip to Tokyo, are intimidated by looking at the public transportation system. The route networks are quite complicated, but actually, when you know how to ride, it's quite simple. And in this video, I'll break it down for you and tell you everything you need to know to successfully navigate the train, subway, and Shinkansen network in Tokyo. So I'm gonna break this video up into three simple areas. One, just things you need to know about the public transportation system in Tokyo in general. Two, uh, how to buy tickets and three, what to do when you're actually riding the train or finding the train or finding your tracks and getting on it. First, we'll talk about things you need to know about the public transportation system in general. Uh, the first thing to know is that the public transportation in Tokyo is not just run by one company, so there's not one ticket that you can buy that works on all of them. Um, the main above ground trains are run by JR. There's a famous line called the Yamanote line. It's a loop that kind of runs around Tokyo. Uh, that's run by the Japan Railways National Railway Company. Uh, the subways are run by private companies. There's um, Toei, Odakyu, KQ. These are all private companies that operate public transportation in Tokyo. So when you look at maps of lines or maps of transportation, uh, if you're in a JR train station, you'll be looking at the JR train map. If you're in a subway station, you'll be looking at the subway map. Um, so it's important uh, to either have a combined map that shows you all of the routes, which those can be really complicated, or uh, in today's modern day and age, you can use some route planning applications. Uh, a really popular one that I like, they have a website and also a phone app, is called Hyperdia. Uh, if you use Hyperdia, you can put in your starting station and your ending station, and it will give you suggested routes that'll tell you um, where to start, where to transfer, and how much the tickets cost. So I suggest you do that um, before you're going someplace while you still have internet access. If you have a mobile device, you can use Hyperdia on your mobile device, or you can use Google Maps as well that will give you the suggested route. Okay, now let's talk about getting tickets to ride public transportation. A lot of people ask me the question, should they get a JR pass when they're coming to Japan? And it sort of depends. Uh, it depends how far you're going to go. So if you're starting in Tokyo and you're going to Kyoto, and then you're going to come back to Tokyo, then it's worth it to get the JR pass because the price of the round trip Shinkansen, the bullet train, will exceed the price of the pass and therefore you'll get some value. If all you're doing is staying in Tokyo, then um, don't buy a JR pass because you won't um, make enough money back on just the fares in Tokyo. And frankly, in Tokyo, most of the transportation you'll probably be doing is not just on the JR line, because the JR passes are only good on JR trains. It means they're not good on the subway, the KQ line, the Odaku line, um, and a lot of the major transportation systems in Tokyo. If you are considering buying a JR pass, um, just know there's a lot of different ones. Uh, actually, on this trip uh, that I'm doing this video on, we went to Kanazawa, and so we bought the Hokuriku Arch Pass. When you buy these passes, um, they typically will mail you something in the US that you'll then exchange when you come to Japan. Um, it'll have a little thing like this that'll say your uh, the dates that it's valid. This one's valid for seven days and then it has a little map inside that says what particular trains and routes it's valid on. If you are using a JR pass and you're getting on JR trains, the way you use it, um, you can't put it in any of the ticket machines uh, or the wickets. Instead, you'll have to go up to a manned booth uh, and you basically hold this up and show the attendant that's there. They'll nod and then you just walk on through. If you are riding the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train with a JR pass, then I would advise you to get reserved seat tickets. Um, you can go to any Shinkansen ticket office, you just bring your pass, you tell them what Shinkansen train you want to go on, or if you don't even know that, you tell them what city you want to go to, and then they'll give you reserved seat tickets, so that way you have a seat on the bullet train that you're riding on. Okay, so... What if you're not getting a JR pass? And I'll say about half the time I come to Tokyo, I don't get a JR pass. Um, then are you buying individual tickets to ride the train? I would actually not advise that because the tickets are really complicated because there are so many different companies and fares. Um, it's really hard to buy the right ticket for your train and where you're going. 
If you did want to do that, here's what a fare map looks like. Uh, this is the fare map from Tokyo Station, and it's essentially distance-based. So if you were buying a single ticket, you would look at this map, you would see the price at the station that you're going to, and then you would go up to a ticket machine. At the ticket machine, it would have a number of different prices for tickets. You would select the price of the ticket. You would then select how many people are riding. Those are buttons over on the left. Uh, you would then insert your money and it would spit out the appropriate number of tickets. You would then take that ticket, insert it into the ticket gate, um, pick it up when you go out to the ticket gate, and keep that ticket with you because you're going to need that ticket uh, when you exit the train on the other side. What I really advise though is not using those individual tickets, but I advise getting a Suica card. Uh, this is what everybody who lives in Tokyo uses, and the Suica cards are essentially stored value cards. Um, they're RFID cards. They don't give you any discount on riding the trains, but they make it that you can um, essentially load a thousand yen at a time to this card, and then when you go through, you just tap it on this little uh, blue IC circle. When you go through the wickets into the train station, it tells you how much money you have left on the card. And then when you exit the other side, um, you tap this again. If you're transferring from one train company to another train company, say you're transferring from the JR line to the Adaku line, then you'd tap this as you go into the JR line. You'd ride the JR train to the station you're going to. You'd get off. There'd be a transfer gate. You'd tap this again into the docu line and then you tap this again when you exit. Um, it is so much easier. These cost 500 yen for the card which is about five dollars um, and then you can add value to it but the money that you uh, save in time of not having to buy tickets, not having to wait in line, not having to figure out your fares is um, well worth it. So go buy a Suica card. Okay, so now that you've uh, either got your Suica card, your individual ticket, or your uh, pass of some sort, then uh, you go through the gate in the station, and now you need to find where your train is. Um, and in some of the train stations, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, if you're in Tokyo Station or Shinjuku Station, these are two of the biggest train stations in the world that have some of the most passengers that pass through them every day. Um, Shinjuku Station has something like 16 different lines that go through it. And actually, you can see here on the Shinjuku um, map, the nice thing about them is they color code all of the lines. Uh, and so you can look for the line that you're taking, like the Chuo main line uh, will be orange. And if you get on that line at Shinjuku Station, it'll be orange. If you take it to Tokyo Station, it'll be orange. When you get back to Tokyo, you just need to get on the orange tracks. Uh, but you have to know what direction you're heading. Um, they don't really say like east or west they tell you um, what the destination is. So if you're going to Tokyo Station from Shinjuku, you'd look on the platforms for um, the Chuo line to Tokyo Station in that direction. And if you really can't find your track, just ask uh, one of the people who work in the train station. Uh, sometimes the English uh, of the train staff isn't the best, but they will absolutely do their best to try and help you uh, and they'll really get you to where you're going. So if you can't find something, just ask. And if you look lost enough, often um, the Japanese people in the train station, they'll come up to you and ask if they can help you get someplace if, if you're looking particularly distressed. Okay, so now that you've found your track, uh, it's time to get on the train um, or make sure you get on the right train. On many of these tracks in Japan, there are trains that arrive uh, every couple of minutes. So if you know that your train leaves at 12.55 and there is a train on the track you're on departing at 12.53, um, that is not the same train. That is a train that is going someplace else. Um, the Yamanote line uh, departs, I think, every two minutes at peak rush hour. Um, it's pretty crazy. Something else to know about taking the trains is there are different classes of service. So there will be local trains, rapid trains, express trains, limited express trains. They have a lot of different terms for these trains. Basically, the local train stops at every station. Um, the express, rapid express, things like that only stop every so many stations. So if you're going to a station on the line, you can look at the maps along that line that are in the station and they'll show you the different classes of service and which stations they stop at. They'll often color code them on the um, 
light up boards so that you can see like if it's red then it's usually an express train. Now that you find your platform, you found your train, you're in the right place and you know which one you're gonna get on, now it's time to line up. Uh, people in Japan politely line up uh, at these little markers that are in the train floor. Uh, they typically make two lines to wait for the train. Um, they wait patiently. Uh, when the train arrives, the doors open, let everybody get out, and then just follow the group of people onto the train. When you are on the train, there's a certain etiquette to being on the train. Um, there are typically seats that are on the sides of the subway or the train. Uh, if there are elderly people, please let them use those seats. If you are elderly, then go ahead and use those seats. If you're elderly, people will often get up for you so that you can use them. There's often also a particular reserved area on the side um, just for elderly and disabled. So if you're not elderly and disabled, please don't uh, sit in that area. Um, there will also be uh, handholds to hold on in the train. On those handholds, if you are standing, um, you don't just stand in any which direction. You stand facing the people that are sitting in front of you. So make sure that you're facing them and not putting your behind in somebody's face. Uh, they consider that to be very, very rude. When you're on the train and you're trying to figure out what stop you're going to or what stop you're at or what stop you're getting off at, uh, many of the major railways in Tokyo actually have these um, TV monitors that'll show you the route the train's going, what the next stop is, how many minutes to go. Uh, it'll be in Japanese and English. And so when you're on, say, the Yamanote line, all of the trains on that line have this particular feature, which is really nice. If you're on the subway or some of the other lines, sometimes they don't have uh, those train screens. In that case, um, know how many stops you're going and, and you can count. Uh, one of the nice things about the subway is that all of the subway stations, in addition to having names, also have a letter and number associated to them. So a stop on the Ginza line will have the letter G and then a number, so like G6. And a stop on the Marinochi line will have a letter M and then a number, say M4. Uh, and so you can just look and see what stop you're getting off at, what stop you're getting off at G7, G8, G9. Um, something worthwhile to know is that multiple stops on the subway can have multiple different letters and numbers, uh, and one of the stops uh, actually has like five letters and numbers because there's five different um, subway lines that go through there. And now that you're on the train, all you have to do is get off at the right station. Uh, after you've gotten off at the right station, uh, either tap your Suica card to get out, put your little ticket in the wicket to leave, or show your rail pass to exit. Um, there's just a final couple notes I want to make. Um, a lot of people uh, say they're worried about coming to Tokyo because there's like too many people on the train cars. They've seen these things where people actually like get pushed into the train cars. Yes, at rush hour, the trains are really busy. Uh, rush hour is typically um, 7 to 9 in the morning or 7.30 to 9.30 coming into Tokyo uh, and then leaving. It's around 5 to 7 p.m. If you don't want to get um, mushed into a train, uh, then you might want to avoid those particular travel times. Uh, if you're a tourist, then that's pretty easy. Um, just sleep in, have breakfast, and uh, after breakfast around 9.30, mosey on out, you'll be fine. Um, have dinner someplace around six o'clock, and after dinner, um, you'll be after the rush hour crowds as well. If you do find yourself in one of those big mobs in the train cars, uh, and you're kind of just going with the flow, just kind of just kind of get mushed in the car, and you'll be you'll be like this. Uh, and when you get to a stop, just kind of shimmy your way out. You'll kind of have to push your way a little bit, um, but uh, you'll you'll be okay. You'll you'll be able to get out. If you can't get out, then get off at the next stop. You know there'll be another train in two minutes that'll go back the way you want to. Now, if you are a woman riding at rush hour, good news for you. On many of the trains in Tokyo, there are actually special women-only cars, uh, so you can look for these um, pink. Um, labels that'll say women only. They'll give you certain times and those are cars that women can go into. If you are a man, then don't go into the women only car when it's women only time. They will look at you awfully, awfully strange. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope this video uh, will be helpful to you on your trip to Tokyo. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos like it and other cool travel guides that I upload to YouTube every Sunday. Uh, or you can follow 
Topher and I. This is my traveling panda who travels with me almost everywhere I go. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Links are in the description below. Or you might enjoy watching some of these other videos from Japan. Click any of them to watch. Bye-bye.